Hey guys, this is Tiggy Maximus with Tiggy Maximus Talks on Spotify and YouTube, episode 192. Can you believe it guys? 192 episodes on this podcast. What a journey. Uh, thank you guys for following and subscribing to the podcast, spreading the word to your friends and family, and uh, everyone in between. Also, thank you guys for donating to the podcast. There is a link on my Spotify episodes where you click on it, and it'll give you a chance to make a donation to the podcast. Any amount is appreciated. Also, it, there's also a link or a... Uh, URL inside my YouTube episode. Copy and paste that or click it and it will take you to the Spotify episodes and there's that link that I mentioned about where you can donate to the podcast. So yeah, keep listening to all the episodes. Um, Keep the listener count up. I'll keep churning out all of these episodes. You get to find out more what happens at comedy shows and um, also food places and what's happening in sports so on this episode I'm going to talk about two comedy shows one on August 16th which was at the Turquoise Europa Cafe Friday Night Shindig hosted by Mimi Harris produced by Ellis Lynn um another show we got mic drop major malfunction um produced by cheryl sunstead um and hosted by adrian diaz ace diaz so um now i'll talk about something else afterwards i'm probably thinking burritos i've been on a burrito binge Um, Anywho, um, for episode 192, let's start with August 16th, um, Turquoise Europa Cafe. Uh, This show was actually going to be the last show that Mimi Harris was ever going to host at the Turquoise Europa Cafe, much less her last appearance in comedy for a little while. So... Decided to end this with a bang. Um, the show did start with James Allen performing music on his guitar. Kind of get us all uh, warmed up. Very uh, chilled music. Um, some of the songs I do, I am familiar with. Uh, he played those songs for this crowd. There was another uh, packed crowd inside the uh, dining room of the Turquoise Europa Cafe. Um, Mimi got up. She did talk about um, explaining why there's a stigma against women in comedy. And she did mention how women can be funny I'm pretty sure that you can laugh and masturbate or if the case is why people can't seem to do laugh at female comedians is because I guess you can't laugh and masturbate at the same time I guess so um, I remember that from her set um, she did bring up, um, I think, from being Boston, uh, talked about driving without turn signals because turn signals are are for the weak, are a sign of weakness. Um, that's always a fun one. And I guess the whole laughing and masturbating. <laughs> um, that, those are good. Um, you know, good luck to Mimi in comedy in a new city. Um, also trying to establish a new chapter in her life. So 
one day we'll see her back in San Diego. Um, I mean, aside from those two parts, um, I think she did all right. Crowd liked her, but I think those were two of her funniest jokes that she had. So, um, with this crowd, I want to say that Mimi was a uh, seven point seven out of ten. Um. So I guess if we're gonna talk about James's performance too, I guess we can. This is good music. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and anyway, I guess because the crowd is listening to it, I guess we could say that James was a um, seven. 7.9 out of 10 for his uh, musical performance. Uh, next, we have Umbretta di Dio. Um, this one was a little interesting because I think that things kind of paused during Umbretta's um, comedy set. I think it was mainly because she kept explaining that she wasn't saying the words cheated and shitted on. She kept saying cheated on, shitted on, and trying to explain how the two sound very familiar to each other. And I guess this crowd didn't seem to pick up on that right away, and it kind of stopped any kind of momentum that Umbretta had in her set. And then she talked about other stuff, her dual citizenship, her vagina being a national treasure. Um, I also talked about uh, how to prevent guys from hitting on her by not shaving, but apparently guys don't care because women can still spread their legs. Talked about razors though. Um, other than that, um, I want to say um, Umbretta. She was a um, 8.25 out of 10 for a comedy, based off how this crowd was, was going on. So, and next person, Caroline Paxton. Got to see her. Um, this is probably now the third time I've seen her. And I think I've seen her a couple of times very recently, so. Um, she did talk about dating, talked about dating that Mexican guy, her dad being racist, um, she had some good stuff though, and then it kind of started to kind of simmer a little bit towards the end of her set. And all I can take from it is that she is dating a Latino, and then her dad is kind of racist. <laughs> I think that was her thing, but I remember the whole thing she's dating a Latino. Um, I want to say Caroline was uh, eight, eight, eight point eight point one out of ten yeah uh, next we got Chuck Foster always great to see him um, he did talk about his two minutes that you can do stand-up and not sex in comparison between stand-up and sex <laughs> um, I did he did pretty well with this crowd. The uh, crowd was laughing during the set. Um, I want to say that Chuck was a um, eight, eight point, eight point two out of ten. Um, next, we got a new comic. I've never seen it before. 
Driven by Tai Tariqua. Um, she had some interesting crowd members because she was the loudest. Uh, she got the loudest ovation out of everybody because she brought her friends with her. And uh, I think she did talk about Gaiden. And. Um, I'm trying to remember if she mentioned something about fried rice, so uh, I think she did talk about Asian food. So, um, but even though she got a big uh, ovation from her friends, um, I didn't get the sense that um, more than half of her set was. Um, outside of her friends, like it didn't catch on. I, I don't know if it was just the transition to a punchline that I, I didn't get it right away, but it also, it kind of was somewhat chill for the people outside of her friends. So, um, but you know, Tariqua, um, I mean, the fact that she brought people, that's always a good sign. And, um, you know, she um Yeah, I would say she's funny. Just not like an entire room laughing out loud funny, but she was funny. I wanna say that she was an eight out of ten for a combi. Um next we have another new one that I have never seen before, T Therapy. Um to tea therapy, um, I guess she's. I think she's Thai. <laughs> um, and I guess she said that she has bad taste in guys. Um, and then I think she talked about the struggles of giving a blowjob to someone. Who has a size of a lipstick? Um, a lipstick. Uh, um, um, lipstick makeup item. That's the size of the guy's cock that she had work had to work with. And <laughs> she talked about how she bangs her head on the. On the guy's stomach because there's not a lot of of work workspace to do a blowjob. Um, so she did get some good laughs from that, and then it got a little chilled because I think when she tried to explain the blowjob thing, I guess it kind of simmered and people missed the punchline if it was a punchline. So um, I want to say that. Uh, T that therapy was a uh, eight point um, eight point eight point two out of ten. Um, next we have Ethan Horn. Um, now I, I finally got to see him do a full set, and he talked about John Cena, how he looks like um, like someone. Um, I guess you would say um, the reference of Make a Wish and John Cena. He looks like a Make a Wish kid um, that met John Cena. Um, then I guess that he, uh, I guess he made it. <laughs> so he did kind of have some. Some dark jokes, and then um, everything else is just pretty much just funny. Um, I guess like whenever he's in a situation, he just makes light of it, and he would tell us that that story that he had from that funny story, and we thought it was funny too. So he got some good laughs. Um, 
I want to say uh, he was like an 8.5 out of 10. Um, thus, I could. He told me that he got banned from the District 6 bar in Mare Mesa. And I can see why his style could be one that could get banned, but only because he made a woman cry. Um, but other than that, uh, he has some good stuff. And. Um, you know, with the dark comedy and stuff, that that could work. Because, like, if people get the joke, even though it's dark, the main point is, you got the joke. So, um, so yeah, Ethan was 8.5. Um, Sarah Hirschberger went up. Um, I like the joke where she talked about her mom being an alcoholic after the fact that Sarah had bombed at her show. Um, and... <laughs> I always like that. Um, and then she talked about Chris, human crystals. Um, so that was fun. Um, she got some good laughs from the crowd. Um, she does well at that, at that Turquoise Europa Cafe, really. So I want to say that Sarah Hirschberger was an 8.5 out of 10. And then I guess our last comic of the night was Chelsea. Uh, not Chelsea, um, Audrey Hebert. And she talked about how um, how she would have been a hottie back in the 1920s. Imagine her getting hit on by an old guy who wanted her to dance for for um, for a penny. <laughs> for daddy. Um, and then she also talked about um, I guess it's like the gender reveal party. And how there should be different colors for if the baby is ugly or something or hot. <laughs> um, so she got some good laughs, and then sometimes it was kind of chill. Mm. Um, I want to say Audrey was probably uh, eight point. 8.6 out of 10. And then um, the last performer of the night, musician Chelsea Ray. I finally got to see her perform outside of the Mare Mesa District 6. And she did amazing. She had some of her few songs. And apparently, she told everyone that she ran to the show at the Turquoise Europa Cafe in heels because she was coming from, from work. And she was offered a, a spot to do her three songs, and she made it. And now, granted, uh, it started off a little bit rough because of the audio, because uh, they're transitioning from musician, comedy, comic, 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 back to musician. So you had to adjust the speakers and everything. So, but after. Um, Chelsea Ray played for a little bit and they kind of fine-tuned the sound um, she sat on a stool I believe and she just played her three songs and um, she did really well and I think a few people in the crowd said that they will only go to this show if Chelsea Ray is performing that's um, that's quite an impression to have on the fans that people will only go to the show if you're there <laughs> So, Chelsea Ray, I liked your songs. You did pretty well after the rough start. And I want to say um, 8.75 for a performance. Um, next show I went to was on August 18th. This is at the mic drop. Major Malfunction. The show is associated with Cheryl Sunstein. Um, Adrian Diaz got to open the night, or, yeah, yeah, open the show at night, mid, mid evening, I guess you could say. Um, he has some jokes. He has a joke about, um, red ants and red uncle. Um, the fact that I kind of understood the Red Uncles thing and I made other people laugh because I laughed was kind of a good thing. 
Um, I want to say Adrian's comedy though. I want to say it had some chill moments, but he kept telling jokes. Um, I want to say he was a seven point. 7.9 out of 10 for his comedy. Uh, then he went and introduced Annie Isaacs. Finally well, got to see her perform live for the first time. She's a great person. Got, got to talk to her husband after the show. Um, she had a story about her dad um, wanting to wear like a sombrero hat after he found out that there was a wedding and she was going to marry a Mexican guy and um, apparently he was told to not wear a sombrero hat and then he showed up and all of the mariachi band was wearing hats and I guess Andy's dad was kind of kind of sad and disappointed that he didn't get to bring his hat because apparently her husband wanted him to wear a hat just to see that he would wear a hat <laughs> at a Mexican celebration. <laughs> so overall, she did pretty well. Crowd liked her a lot. 8.6 out of 10. Uh, next up, we they brought up Honey Bear. She talked about being a shipper. Her name used to be Julia. Uh, she talked about how she single-handedly saved a lot of lives because she dated a lot of um, school shooter types. And she had sex with these, um, um, these type of guys who would have had a, a uh, urge to do a school shooting. So we should thank her for that. Um, she did pretty well though, for the most part. And then um, I want to say that she was 8.6 out of 10. Uh, next we have Jennifer Mason. Uh, she talked about being a teacher, talked about how she would be overzealous hugging her cats. And then I guess her kids said that that she was harassing her cats and male means male. <laughs> so uh, she talked about, um, I guess, dating or getting hit on at this age and that she still has it. She got it. Um, overall, she did pretty well with this crowd. Crowd liked her a lot. 8.6 out of 10. Then we got Pamela Waldrip. Talked about Silver Singles, Only Pam, um, dancing, being, uh, being in theater. So basically, she's going to be a stripper um, based off of her career aptitude test. Um, with all that, she did really well with the crowd. Crowd liked her so much. She was at 8.7 out of 10. Next we have Rachel Lloyd. Uh, she talked about what this lady said to her at a show. And she really emphasized that this is really exactly what she said. And she said that she was athletic, build, and then, you know, was an inspiration that she could shop um, at Target. Assuming that ugly people would shop at Target, but pretty people shop at Target too. So that was fun. And then um, she talked about um, dating. Um, and so Rod was really into her thing, and I think she did a little bit of um, uh, rap a cappella, I guess you could say. <laughs> But she did freestyle rap, and it was great that she was very much um, into it, and she didn't miss a beat, really. It just kind of took everybody by um, shock, because the fact that she would rap, and Rachel doesn't seem like the type to rap. <laughs> so 8.7 out of 10 for Rachel Lloyd. And then we brought up... Zana White. Um, she has this thing about how she has a way to turn away guys that keep trying to hit on her, given the fact that she's a lesbian. And she talks about 
Jesus and um, the Holy Spirit and pray pray for her or pray for Jesus and we'll keep saying that to get guys to stop buying her drinks buying her food <laughs> buying her stuff so but it was kind of chilled for the most part during her set though I gotta say um, I want to say she was an 8.25 she, get, she did get some good laughs from that, but I think it was mostly chill after, for the most part. So, And then the last person to go up was Cheryl Sunstein, uh, the woman of the hour, the reason why we're all there. And she told some good jokes, talked about how this guy came to her workplace at an amusement park and was expecting five-star service. But this is like a two-star establishment. <laughs> um, so she has this uh, phrase, catchphrase, adjust your expectations accordingly. <laughs> um, so yeah, she did pretty well. She has some funny jokes, and you know her friends and her supporters were all there. Made a good night, and she thanked everybody. So. Overall, Cheryl Sunstein was an 8.7 out of 10 for her comedy. Good stuff. Um, so, I'll talk about three burritos I've had. They're all big burritos. The first one, the Bolt Burrito. It has pork, sausages in it. It has carne asada in it. French fries. Um, their usual guacamole and salsa fresca and some veggies that was huge and the fact that I finished it without having a tummy ache is a good sign <laughs> um, they do have some spicy salsa especially the orange one but I didn't do the orange one I just did um, salsa verde and I think their version of um, salsa uh, fresca so or salsa or pico, de, pico rancho ranchero or salsa ranchero um, so that was cool um, very yeah again it was very big and very tasty I want to say it was an 8.5 out of 10 another big burrito I had was a surf and surf burrito at the El Patron in Mermesa just down the street from Sayulitas, where the bulk burrito is, which I will go back to the Pac-Man burrito at some point. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I'll talk about it again. Um, their surf and turf has rice in it, of course, carne asada, shrimp. Um, but that was big, and it was pretty yummy actually I like the flavor and um, I would get that again they also have a Westfield burrito also super big and it has carne asada and pollo asado I'll probably try that next time I'm there um, I would say their surf and surf was a 8.6 out of 10 and the third big burrito I had um, oh, I know where it is. The big burrito from TJ Tacos in Escondido. I got the uh, chapachanga for the adobado, adobada meat and carne asada. Um, that one was really good. They do. Um, they do have red salsa and green salsa, but they're both pretty spicy. Um, but when you have both the autobotomy meat and the curious side meat together in a burrito, man, it's good. Really good. I gotta say it was an 8.8 .8 out of 10. I like having a big burrito and they give you big portions and you never leave unsatisfied. It builds you up. I would like to have that only because 
I was at a comedy show in Escondido, which I will talk about in the next episode, with Scott and Barrow. And because Scott and Barrow is in Escondido, it just so happens, DJ Tacos opens till like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, every day. So, I might as well get good food. Because uh, I don't think they had food. They did have pizza. Um, at the Forgotten Barrel, but they didn't. But I was craving the TJ Taco Burrito. The chum- the Chape Chanco. So, um, well, that's for, uh, that's it for me, guys. I have to talk to you about three burritos, three big burritos on this episode, two comedy shows. I'm glad I got to tell you guys because it was on my mind for a while. Uh, next time I'll talk to you guys, I'll talk to you guys about these two comedy shows, The Forgotten Barrel, in Escondido, um, August 24th, and I was at another comedy show, um, I might have been at the mic drop. Um, it might have been on, um, hmm, where was I? So one was Forgotten Barrel on August 24th, and the other show, I believe it was, um, And I went to the show at the mic drop with Taylor Spencer. Um, cringe comedy. That was on Thursday, the 22nd, August 22nd. So I'll talk about those two shows. And I'll, on my next episode with those two comedy shows, I will talk about um, the Sango Padres, how well they're doing. And, um, I guess I'll talk about um, Jared Candemir versus, uh, uh, what's his name? Cayo Baraljo. That was the main event of UFC Fight Night. <laughs> um, that was August 24th, I believe. So, all right, guys, that's it for me. You know the saying goes. Remember to have good food. Remember to have some good company. Watch some good fights. Watch a good comedy show. And boom, Tiggy Maximus signing off, baby. There, guys. <laughs>